All right, so I want to uh, welcome you once again to uh, the HCIA, the Huawei Certified ICT Associate Security version 3.0, the professional training uh, program that is meant to that is meant to train professionals. So um, today we want to be looking at the very first chapter and it's going to be an introduction to uh, the basic concepts of information security. Uh, like I told you before, my name is uh, Sandy Samuel and I am going to be your instructor throughout the course uh, to make sure that uh, you grasp everything to make sure that you're comfortable. Uh, those who are not part of the call, by the time I was introducing myself, I said I am Sandy Samuel and I am a cyber security practitioner, an IT auditor, a lecturer, an entrepreneur, and an ethical hacker. Uh, I, I, I told you previously that uh, my professional passion is in uh, mentoring the next generation of cyber security professionals uh, through working closely with organizations and uh, 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 teaching institutions like universities to make sure that we enhance their uh, cybersecurity knowledge and also at the end of the day adding value and service to my community. I've done quite a number of certifications, uh, the Microsoft certifications, Cisco certifications, Novel certification, Aviatrix, Computia, CISA and ETC and ETC. So today we want to be looking at the basic concept of uh, information uh, the best concept of information security. I want to understand what is information security anyway? Why is it important? Why should we look at it? And why should we gather over 183 people on the call, listening in and trying to understand what information security is? So fast forward, uh, information security is a process of ensuring that there is safe data communication and also preventing issues such as information leakage, I want you to pay attention to that, information modification and information disruption, okay? So this document describes the basic concepts and protection measures of information security as well as information security risks and associated ass assessment and avoidance methods. So we want to look at disruption. Why do we want to prevent issues such as disruption? When there's disruption, you will all know that they won't be, uh, you won't be able to access your data and it won't be available for you. If your information is uh, modified and let's say people go there and change numbers and figures, your information will not be true to itself. Therefore, it will lack inte integrity, right? It will lack integrity. And if your information leaks and unauthorized people get access to your information, they get to find out what you are planning in your business, all what you're talking about and what you're discussing, your information will not be confidential anymore, isn't it? And ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pay attention to these details, which we are calling the CIA triad, because it's going to be very fundamental as far as information security is concerned. Whatever we do, whatever we're going to be discussing, at the end of the day, we are just trying to ensure that our information is confidential. We're also trying to ensure that our information has integrity, it has not been tampered with, and it is true to uh, in its form, and also that our information is available and it can be accessed at any time of the day that we need. So this document describes the best concepts and protection measures of information security and as well as information security risks and associated assessments and avoidance methods. So moving forward upon completion of this course, you'll be able to describe the definition and characteristics of information security. You'll be able to explain the characteristics and differences of information security models and also differentiate between security risks and try to say what are security risks? What are the different security models? And what is the characteristics of secu information security anyway? So let us look at information and information security. Um, we all know what information is, right? And I will not ask you what is information. 
I believe uh, by the time you are here, you know that information is something that is making sense to you, something that has information, that has meaning to you, or something that you can use to drive to your decision as a person. But in this case, we want to look at information as the information created, received, and maintained as evidence and information by an organization in either pursuance of legal obligation or in the transaction of business. So we want to look at that kind of information. The information that we can keep as evidence, the information that people, organizations are, use, are, are going to use when they are pursuing legal obligations all in our day-to-day -day transactions of our businesses. Uh, when you look at the ISO or the IEC guidelines of management of information technology, this is how they describe the information and these guidelines, we're going to look at them in detail and try to understand why are they even important to us as security engineers. So what is information? We said that information can be books, it can be state secrets. Uh, you know, if state secrets are leaked, then the country may be in jeopardy. We all know that books and letters, let's say confidential letters are leaked or they're even modified. You're telling someone to uh, promote someone and they modify your letter and they ask the HR to fire. Imagine if you're the boss, the kind of controversy that would be there. All your emails, some of our emails are meant to be confidential, they're meant to uh, you know, not be tempered with and you need to access them as and when the need arises. Now, the radar signals, uh, you know, if someone tempered with them, there would be chaos at the, you know, some of those uh, uh, aviation sites. Transaction data, imagine if you're someone uh, tempered with your transaction data, you withdrew 50,000, but at the end of the day, you go and find that actually the 50,000 multiplied itself into 250. Thousand. I don't think you would be happy, would you? You wouldn't be happy. Even the test questions themselves, as simple as the test questions. Imagine if the test questions of your organization or let's say your university or a company that, uh, that Huawei hires, like Pearson View, to manage their exams. Imagine if the exams leaked and everyone knows that the test questions for Huawei are available and they leaked and people can access them people will not even give that certification value anymore because your information has been tempered with and it is not true in its form, isn't it? So we want to look at information security. We have looked at what information is and we try, we try to understand what information. Uh, maybe before we look at information security, I told you that information can be communicated in a number of different ways. Eh? You can send yourselves messages, signals, data, intelligence or even knowledge. It may also exist in multiple forms like uh, pictures, like uh, facilities, uh, newspapers, written letters, emails, drawings, billboards, etc. and etc. That is information, the kind of data. You know that the companies which deal in information are earning big just by processing and being in control of information. They're not selling to you anything that is tangible but they're making a lot of money from the information which you are sharing from their platform. That is how valuable information is. So we want to look at information security. After knowing what information is, why do we need to secure it anyway? So information security refers to the preservation of the confidentiality, we talked it about it already, uh, of the integrity and availability of the data through security technologies. Do you think if your messages, your personal messages you have on your devices, if they were accessible by everyone who wanted to, do you think that, those, that that information would be making sense to you? Do you even think you'd be happy? Or would you, even, you, would you still last in your relationship? I think the answer would be no. Imagine if your information still was tampered with and it's not true in its sense. Still, uh, you'd also not have meaningful information. Or imagine if you wanted to access your data, your information and unable to access it because of one reason or another, I think you'd also still have issues. So we want to look at how we can preserve the confidentiality, the integrity and the availability of our data through such security 
technologies. So these technologies include computer software. We can use computer software to make sure that we achieve what we have talked about here, and also hardware, network, and other key technologies. So organizational management measures throughout the information life cycle, right from its generation to how it's going to be transmitted, how it's going to be exchanged from one device to another, how it's going to be processed and how it should be stored. So this is very essential as far as information security is concerned, okay? So if our information is damaged, if our information assets are damaged, what do you think we are going to affect. If our information assets are damaged, we're going to affect quite a number of things. We already say that our information security is to help us protect our hardware, isn't it? We said it also helps us to protect our software and also the data on our systems, the data on our information networks from occasional malicious damage, tampering, and also leakage. It also ensures that there's continuous and reliable system operation as well as uninterrupted services. Okay, this is what it does. So in case our information assets are damaged, then we can have issues with our national security. If there is a, a leakage and modification of our state data, we have issues with our national security. Imagine if you knew what the government is planning, what our security agency, we have here our friend, uh, our friend, um, uh, the policeman, I'm forgetting, Biarohanga, it was Biarohanga, is it? Yes, yes. Yes, Mr. Biarohanga, imagine if your security operations that you are planning uh, leaks and, you know, it is out there in the public domain, you will know that terrorists can take that advantage, all bad elements can take that advantage and they know, oh, on such and such a day, these people are planning to do ABCD, or they are planning to do this kind of, let's say, maybe operation, it would also put our national security at risk. So the very first and important aspect as far as information security is concerned is national security because if nationally you are not safe then even the citizens are not safe isn't it mr biohanga that is my assumption so yeah true yes so as far as information security is concerned and if the assets are damaged imagine you, our cctv cameras that we have that, that the police is using maybe to monitor and to make sure that everything is going on well imagine if everyone in this forum can just open up your phone and you see who is accessing Kampala road right now who is going where? Do you think we would be safe as a nation? Anyone? Do you think we would be safe? No. No. Yes. Very disastrous. Yes. It would be very disastrous. That's why we need to make sure that there's confidentiality, that there's integrity, and also that the information is available. Imagine if the crisis happened at, uh, let's say, somewhere in our city, and we need to keep track and, you know, see how it happened, who were able to do it, and which road they took. And uh, Mr. Biaohanga there is trying to access the systems and is unable to get the information. He's trying to call his friends at uh, another station, and the phone calls are not going through or they're trying to even search through their database and they're unable to access the information, still would have an issue with national security because our information is not available, isn't it? It's not available at the time that the authorized users want to access it. So for us to ensure that we have information security, it has to be confidential. Only the authorized personnel should be able to access that information and only it shouldn't be tempered with someone should not go into i'm sorry to use me sabiao hanga and, and the cctv examples someone should not go into our cctvs and you know delete the, some footage and leave there the other then it is not true in its sense and when we come and we are following up that kind of footage it will not give us a true representation of what transpired therefore we cannot rely on that information to make meaningful conclusions and decisions because our data doesn't have our information doesn't have integrity it has been tempered with and also we need to make sure that it's available whenever the authorized persons need to 
access the data. So these technologies we said, if, if they're affected, our national security is in jeopardy. Even how we are going, to, how systems are going to be operating and even the continuous development, we are going to be having issues because the systems are not going to be available. If, if they have been tempered with, they're going to be having breakdowns, there's going to be information leakage and so on. Then mostly, and also important, the personal privacy and, you know, property. Imagine if all your details, your family members, your phone number and everything were accessible by the public for your bank details and your PIN codes. Do you think you'd be happy? You would wake up one day if you are a millionaire, you'll be the brokest person on earth when people have even taken loans from your account, isn't it? Because they have access to all your information, your personal data and information is not private to you and it is out there in the private, in the public domain. Even your information such as your bio data lean, just leaking is also a danger in itself. So we need to make sure that there's personal privacy and also privacy to the uh, properties of individuals. So the aim of information security is to protect data against threats through technical means and effective management. The key, note, key word to note here is technical means and effective management, effective management. It's not by chance or by luck that people try their level best to make sure that their systems are secure. It is also, it is done through technical means and effective management. So let us try and see the information uh, you know, uh, the information security development cycle. How did they develop the information security and how is it up to date, like the stages it has gone through? So we see in the early 1990s or the, the 1900s, communication, there was a communication secrecy stage. Here there was limited communication technologies and di dispersedly stored data. Data would be stored in one location, let's say the military bases, and only the people who are access to access those military bases would have access to information. There was no communication, there was no network. So only the people who have IDs and they're allowed to access the facility, they enter the facility, they check through the box files, and then they are able to get the information and the data. We see that in the 1960s here, which we are calling the information security stage. In this stage, internet development brought new challenges and threats to information security because now they had developed internet and people were connected on the internet and they were able to share. This means that a hacker somewhere could actually tap and be able even if they, are, they have not necessarily accessed the physical location to get the data. In the 1980s, this is where we're calling the information assurance. The assurance, you're just giving a positive affirmation that there is, we have an assured kind of something. And this looked at information-based security replacing the traditional security. Traditional security, like I said, they used to focus on the physical facilities. Here, now they're looking at the information-based security. How do we make sure that before we look at the physical aspect of protecting our information, how are we going to be able to protect our information? And we're going to look at this later on in detail. So do not worry about that. So let us look at this photo. Uh, all, uh, and we're going to also try and understand what information leakage is. At this point, I'm going to ask you, uh, the people on this quorum, when you look at this man here, this picture here, this photo, what comes to your mind? You can speak to me. He's in a cold environment. He's in a cold, a cold em environment. Environment. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Um, he looks to be surveying something. He looks to be, oh, that's a sub spelling of surveying. He looks to be surveying something. He looks like he's working. He looks like he's what? Working. Working? Yes. Uh, uh, and again, when you look at the, the hand, it's like he's uh, looking direction. Like he's what? The, the hand is, is pointing some direction. Uh, like he's showing some direction? Yes. 
Okay. Um, Anyone else? He seems there's to be something behind. behind. There's and something, there's the something behind the man. Something behind the man. It is. He must have been in an in the smile. The man is in Spain. He also looks at him. The man is what? He looks very attentive. He is in an industrial setup. Industrial? He is of Asian descended. Setup? Okay. He looks like he's navigating a ship. Navigating a ship? Is a Chinese man. <laughs> Eskimo. It was a, it is a Chinese man. Okay. Eskimo. He's what? An Eskimo from the North Pole, those people in Greenland. Okay. He's uh, like from the North Pole, like in Greenland. Yes, I think I think he has gone to some place where where like there is a fire. Mm. He has gone to some there place too where much there smog, is too much smoke. Smoke. Where where there is too much smoke. Okay, where well, there is too much smoke. Okay. He also looks very attentive. He also looks, looks very attentive. Yeah, very yeah. attentive. Okay. I think uh, I've had enough. He also viewers. looks like he wasn't expecting looks like a photo. A spy. <laughs> looks, looks like, like a spy. he was not. He looks like a spy. Someone is saying he looks like. He also looks like he was not expecting to. Okay. He looks like a man at a development plant. A man at a development plant. Okay, thank you all for sharing. Let us try and look at information leakage, right? Want to look at information leakage now. Uh, this guy took a picture. Preferably, he was at some oil, 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 oil field, and he was sending the oil, the picture, preferably maybe to the wife at back at home, maybe to you know the kids to just look at him, the children to just look at him, or maybe even to his girl friend, right? Or even to his colleagues. Hey guys, guess what? I'm just here working, enjoying life. But little did they know, and actually they had no idea. And also him himself had no idea that this particular image could actually convey very important information. See, the thing is that after the Chinese invited bids for the oil production equipment, the Japanese intelligent experts use this simple picture you're seeing here to uncover the following secrets uh, about the Daijing oil field. They were able to see, based on how he was dressed and how he looks like, they were able to see and to know that since he's putting on like he's from a, a, for a very cold place, just like Kabiahanga told us, he looks like he was in a cold place, right? This cold place of this kind of degree, based on their algorithm and artificial intelligence, they were able to tell that it is located in between 46 uh, degrees either south and 48 degrees north, as indicated by the way he was dressed. Okay, this guy was called Wang Jingzi. So, depending on how Wang Jingzi was dressed, these guys were able to know that this oil field is located between this place. And they were also able to tell, depending on what he was holding, the diameter of the oil well, they're able to tell the diameter of the oil well inferred from the handle rack that he was holding. So they use this simple information to modify their bid, okay? To modify their bid so that it suits exactly to the bid of uh, the Chinese government. They were able to put in a bid and imagine you're competing with someone who does not know anything to do with this particular bid. They were able to come up with a perfect budget. They were able to come up with perfect equipment and they were able to, to, you know, to come up with the perfect supplies because they already knew 
where the old well was and how they were going to be able to take care of the needy other greetings. So they were able to win the bid, not because they were lucky, but because information leaked unknowingly, information leaked and the Japanese company intelligence were able to tell these details. So that means that this kind of bidding was not free and fair at all, isn't it? Imagine mm. they're de- bidding with the Total, they're bidding with Shell and other oil companies. But these other oil companies are just in guesswork. They're just giving them a normal budget uh, with normal equipment. But these guys are coming up with a perfect bid, specifying all the details that the Chinese government would be interested in, thereby winning the bid, okay? And winning the contract. So this is how, as simple as this image, it was able to put Japanese intelligence in that kind of of position. So even something as simple as an image, you are somewhere out there, let's say, uh, enjoying McDonald's or Cafe Java's and take us, you know, a selfie. Hey guys, have you seen how I'm looking like? And then you send it out there. Now, people who are in the intelligence uh, can be able to look at that information, to look at that picture until the day, the time, and, you know, other details. And today's pictures are even having more details embedded into them, like the geotag location, like the time the picture was located, the altitude, and so on and so Fourth. So you just look at the communication secrecy, which was in the 1900s, the first stage. So in the early 1900s, communication technologies were underdeveloped and data was stored in different locations, like the military army bases. Eh? And information security was limited to only physical security of information, and they used cipher based security of communication, mainly stream cipher. They had cards that they used to, you know, you go and press the card and move it and transfer it from one machine to another. So they used to use that kind of uh, mechanism. So as long as information was relatively secure in a place, you have your guards with guns and no one is entering, they are very annoyed, you would know that your information was secure. So as long as your information was relatively in a secure place, Unauthorized users were prohibited from accessing the information and data security could be generally guaranteed. As long as you know, no one can access that facility, then you know your information is secure. So in this case, the, uh, uh, in the case that we mentioned previously, the, it was ignored that the photo may reveal sensitive information about the oil field. And the, by limiting the dissemination or recipients of the photo, the information leakage could have been prevented, okay? So if, if they say that, you know what, no taking photos at this farm, no sending out photos, no putting photos of this thing in the internet, then that information could be protected and that information couldn't have leaked if those mechanisms were put in place. Let us look at the information security stage. So in the 1990s, internet technologies have developed rapidly and information leaks have increased. You all agree. We are seeing people battling every single day that their nodes have leaked, that their pictures have leaked, that their emails have leaked, that confidential information has leaked. Even before a communication comes through, people already have documents from the state house, what cabinet has decided, isn't it? Because the internet technology has grown and almost everyone is connected. And so if people are not aware, uh, they're not aware uh, or they're not well informed about information security, then information leaks is inevitable. So as a result, in addition to just confidentiality, integrity and availability, information security also began to focus on more principles and objectives. Principles such as controllability and non-repudiation. When it comes to controllability, we are basically just wanting to make sure that we can monitor, we can control our systems, and we know who can do what on our system. So it ensures that uh, it implements security monitoring to protect information and its systems against attacks that we can we are in control of our system this is what we are looking at when you look at 
controllability. When it comes to non-repudiation, this one is very interesting to me. And for it in cybersecurity, it prevents the sender or receiver from denying the information. If you sent me an abusive message and I went to Mr. Biaruhanga and I reported you and opened up a case, there's no way you can say, you know what, uh, that was the phone, it was not me. As long as it's your email address and it is registered to you, you cannot deny that it was not you who sent the message. So non-repudiation looks at the user, individual user taking your responsibility. If you gave out your PIN to your girlfriend or to your friends and they withdrew money from your account using your username and your PIN, when it is not being hacked, you cannot go to the bank and tell them to pay you your money, but rather because you cannot deny these things are meant to be confidential to you and using the principle of non-repudiation, there's no way you cannot deny that it was not you who withdrew that money using your confidential details, which even the bank doesn't know. It is only you who knows those details. So how did someone else get to know those details? We assume that it was you who used that information to withdraw that money. We looked at confidentiality already and we said, what does confidentiality do? Just to make sure that people are in class. Uh, uh, confidentiality. I, I didn't hear you. Can just say mic check and talk to us. Mic check. Yes, please. Mm, confidentiality means that the data is only accessible to the people authorized, as in it's not accessible to everyone. Only authorized to the people, only accessible. The data is only mm. gotten by the people authorized. Like if you have the access key, or if you have access to the data, then you can get it, but not anybody outside the authorized people. Authorized? Personnel, very good. We also looked at in, uh, at integrity. What did we say that integrity does? Uh, it's to integrity. No, okay. integrity ensures that uh, data remains in a, in a meaningful state, like it should not be altered anyhow. It is not altered, altered or modified. Accurate, yes. Consistent, and it is consistent. Okay. And data. We also said on integrity, the data, sh the, the information should be true. It shouldn't be tampered with for it to be integral. Okay. Yes. In so it should be intact. Intact. Should be tampered with. It should be intact. Okay. In Very good no words. State. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It was Constawat. Your name was hard to grasp, but we shall get it along the way. It the was only lady who was. Constance. Constance, yes. Constance, okay. The only lady who has participated tonight. Thank you, Constance. So we talked about availability. What did we say? What did we look at availability? Information well, being accessed at all times. Accessed access. at all times? Sure. Accessed when needed. Accessed when needed. But in a secure manner, no but disruption. In a secure manner, no disruption. Okay, by authorized users. We have looked at controllability. I've explained, and we have looked at and repudiation. So information security involves all these that we have looked at: confidentiality, integrity, availability, controllability, and none. Repudiation. So in general, information security is to ensure the effectiveness of electronic information, whereas confidentiality means resisting passive attacks by, adhers by making sure that they prevent information leakage to unauthorized users. Integrity means resisting active attacks by preventing unauthorized Temporary. Okay, someone can help me mute if you have noise in the background by preventing unauthorized tempering. So, availability is to ensure that the information and information system are actually used by 
authorized users. Whereas controllability, like we said, it helps us to control our system, to monitor uh, our information and uh, our information systems. Richard, uh, watching a movie. Okay, so we will move to the next slide. And we just want to look at the information assurance stage. So basically, with this information assurance stage, they're just giving assurance. Uh, how can we use information system? There are businesses, different service traffic with bias risks and protection methods uh, were being looked at. Security systems were put in place to make sure that they consensive security management and technical protection where there's proactive defense, but not just passive protection. And then finally, management, where talent development and system established for security management. So these were business-oriented information security assurance. Let us look at a case here. Recently, we have heard of so many hacks that have taken place, right? I've heard of so many attack hacks that have taken place, that have been reported, that have been hit by big governments like the government of the US and so on and so forth. So we also want to look at this case here of the WannaCry. Trust me, if this ransom were attacked you, you would want to cry. That's why they called it the WannaCry. You would want to cry. So in, two, in, um, in, in 2017, the WannaCry ransomware, or what they're calling the crypto worm, propagated through the internal blue and infected over 100,000 computers, causing about a tune of 8 billion US dollars. That is a lot of money. What it used to do, it used to exploit the vulnerability of Windows port 4.4. Port 4.4.5 is the one used for server messaging block, it's a protocol. And this WannaCry exploited that vulnerability in, on the Windows operating system. It featured itself by self-replicating and also included a transport kind of mechanism to automatically spread itself. So among the infected Windows operating systems at that time in China, and of course also other parts of the world, Mostly the people on campus network suffered the most and a large number of you know, research, laboratory data and final year projects were locked and encrypted. And the encryption systems and database files of some large enterprises were also encrypted and were totally failed to run properly. These guys would ask for money after encrypting your system. They attacked the transport sector. They attacked the energy sector. They attacked government agencies. They attacked education. Once the system gets there and, talks you and puts only this screen on your computer and you cannot navigate away until you pay that ransom. So they would ask for money for you to pay. And it affected those guys. And you know, people ended up losing their product, projects, losing their proposals, their research, their data, their work information because of this ransom where, and that was in 2017. Though you see now, now like in our, some of our countries, like uh, I would talk about Uganda, people here more so like at campus, most, most of the students, what they keep on their laptops are songs. They have their songs of what, of Sukari, Yes, of Sukari and listening. So if you're a hacker and you're a manager and you send them a ransomware and you're able, they don't have information that would risk them to go ahead and pay for you ransomware. The next time you go ahead and check on them, you'll find that actually they have installed a new operating system. They'll just go ahead, format the disk and then install a new Windows system. And then you ask yourself and wonder. By the time you have hacked them, you just find the new operating system. But if you have your important data and you end up being a victim of this, trust me, it is something that you would consider and you'd feel so bad that you have been attacked by this kind of ransomware. There was also the Ocean Lotus and uh, it uh, since April 2012, the Ocean Lotus group has carried out targeted penetration and attacks on important sectors of China, such as government, scientific research institutes, maritime institutions, maritime constructions and shipping 
enterprises. The attacks are intended to obtain confidential information, intercept intelligence sent out by attacked computers, and enable computers to automatically send out related intelligence. Okay. And this has been happening a lot. So what they used to do, they used to uh, use uh, spear phishing. They also used to use the watering hole. With the watering hole, the attacker exploited the vulnerabilities of websites, uh, those websites that were not secure, or they would tamper with the URL of the website and make it appear like it's a website and then uh, end users will end up getting Trojan horses. And we shall look at some of those threats and what they mean later on. By spear phishing, what they used to do, a Trojan horse, uh, they used to send it uh, to you in form of an attachment on your email and with an attractive, you know, like heading, like a necessary form or presidential address or what. And then when you open that attachment and download it on your computer, then your computer is infected. So, what are the causes of such attacks? We have looked at those attacks. We have also talked about so many attacks that happened in the US. You heard of the attack that was on the African Union headquarters. You have heard of attacks here in Uganda, Stanbeek mm -hmm. and MTN uh, came up, uh, I think at the towards the end of last year and, and talked about how the, their systems were attacked because someone exploited the vulnerability in the API, the payment gateway, and they were able to you know, to, to play alone. So what causes such attacks? We want to look at that and focus on that. So we have two things. We have direct causes and indirect causes. Information systems can sometimes be complex. And the more you design complex systems, sometimes also bring about uh, complexity and also sometimes also end up leading to defects. So with the direct causes, you install a virus on your computer to directly go ahead and either destroy your information or you know cause your computer to have to 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 behave in a funny way. Uh, there's a vulnerability. A vulnerability. We said it is a weakness in a system. If the vulnerability is there, people hackers will exploit that vulnerability and they'll be able to access your information. The Trojan horse and the backdoor uh, program. Uh, and also the distributed denial of service attack. These are some of the direct ways that someone can lead or some ways that can cause such attacks. So let us look at the indirect causes. Uh, we talked about the information complexity and human environment. So if information is complex enough, either in structure or complex by application, sometimes it also leads to, uh, to such causes. So let us look at the significance of building an information security, of building information security. So the significance of building information security is uh, uh, one of the importance is that information networks has become the foundation of economic prosperity. We all agree businesses thrive on information, processing information, and you know, putting that information forward. Social stability also relies on information network and also even national development itself relies on that information and statistics and data. So information profoundly influences the global economic integration, national strategy adjustments and security policies. That's why information security has transformed from just a technical issue into a matter of national security and this is world over not just here in africa or in uganda it is applicable to many technical fields like uh, the command centers like uh, our police uh, our our colleagues in the police in the army in the intelligence control communications computers and intelligence uh, e-commerce systems biomedical systems intelligence systems banking sector education and so many other fields where information uh, you know uh, security is applicable too because we need to protect that information we need to keep it secure so let us look at information security risks and management we want to look at those things maybe for those who are there what comes to your mind when you hear the word risk um risk the danger the likelihood of uh, of uh, and uh or a danger that someone has said or carried. 
Hello. Yes, please. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Mm. A risk yes. is a vulnerability. Hello. A vulnerability. A vulnerability awaiting to be exploited. A vulnerability awaiting to be exploited. Hello. Okay. Hello. Yes, yes please. please. Yes, yes, I'm saying. Yes, please. Uh, the risk, those are basically the um, dangers that mm. that can compromise mm. the confidentiality, mm. integrity, and mm. availability of the data vis-a-vis -vis okay. the other two that were mentioned. Okay. Yes, please. Thank you. This is uh, Chigozi. Yes, please. Chigozi David from Uganda. Thank you, Chigozi David. I think you're all correct, but uh, Chigozi David has some detail, right? Please, when you forget that you have noise in your background, Richard, please let us be mindful of our backgrounds. If you have unmuted yourself and you know you have noise, just be respectful enough to remember to mute yourself. It's as simple as that. So he, he has told us that it is... Okay, Richard, I think I'm going to put you in the waiting room because sorry, I sorry, sorry. You and you keep unmuting yourself and yet you have noise in the background. No, I'm following the conversation, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it, this is a potential for loss or damage when a threat exploits a vulnerability. So I want to be looking at those risks to our information security. Okay, let's move to the next slide. Okay, okay. So these are the different risks. We have uh, our, we have the physical risks. We have the network risks. We have the system risks, the information risks, application risks management risks, and also other risks. So what I'm going to do here, um, I'm going to put you in, a, I'm going to put you in groups of, let's say physical risks will be group one. So be group two, this will be group three for system, group four, and then application for group five, and then management, group six. So I'm going to put you in groups of six, and you use only 10 minutes to discuss, uh, to discuss, uh, to discuss, uh, to discuss those things, right? To discuss those things. And after discussing those things, you come back and you choose a group leader. And after choosing a group leader, you will go ahead and share with us, uh, share with us what you have discussed. You just choose a group leader and that group leader will help us share with us what you have discussed, okay? This is what I'm going to do. I am working on the rooms now. You should be able, you should be able to uh, get your rooms in the next few, uh, next few seconds. When you get to your room, just kindly discuss in your group. First thing you do, choose a leader. After choosing a leader, uh, summarize those risks, what you think about them. Then you're going to come back and share uh, with us what you have, uh, what you have discussed in your group, okay? What are risks as far as management is concerned? Uh, what are risks as far as uh, as far as application uh, uh, applications are concerned, as far as systems are concerned, as far as information is concerned, as far as network are concerned, as far as uh, uh, as far as a uh, uh, physical uh, the physical environment is concerned. So I have uh, created the rooms. I've created the rooms, and. 
Yep, there are six rooms. You will see your title when you see the title kindly. Just make sure that you get there. You are going to they're going to run uh they're going to run for uh they're going to run for 10 minutes. They're going to run for 10 minutes when the 10 minutes are done. Uh, just uh, kindly come back to that group and the group leader discusses for us. I hope that is clear. All right, so I'm creating the groups now. Yes, please. Hey, oh, this is uh, Chigos David once again. Yes, David. Uh, how are we going to be in position to know our, our groups and the rooms? They are going to be automatically assigned. You just look at it when you're entering it and accepting it. It will either show you whether physical or network or system or information. You look at it and you'll be okay. able to know. Okay, thank yes. you, sir. All right. So I'm doing that right now. Guys who are still in the call, just kindly, you have seen something on your chat. Make sure that you join your group which has been assigned to you. If you're still in the chat, means that you have not joined your group. Kindly make sure that you join the group and discuss with your peers. You have less than nine minutes. If you're in the chat, it means you have not yet joined your group. Kindly make sure that you join your group and discuss with your peers.
My network went off, so I left the room. So I need some assistance. Uh, I'm 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 closing actually the the breakout rooms, eh? so it won't be. Uh, necessary. We just went to hear from what our colleagues discussed for us. So they're just coming back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back, uh, welcome back from the groups. I hope uh, you are able to, 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 to grasp something. So, um, we, we are not going to, okay, we're not going to hear from uh, group one, that was physical risk. Uh, you have just three minutes to present to us what you guys discussed about. What happened, Mr. Samuel? Yes. What happened? Yes, uh, about uh, interrupt uh, the stream video. Are oh. you making break or what? No, no, no. We actually, what happened was uh, we were in a room. We had... Uh, uh, um, Someone is not muted. Eh? We had we had different groups, uh, the physical group, network, security system, and information, and they had grouped uh, participants in those different groups to go and discuss. Eh? So if you are streaming from elsewhere on this platform, I think you should have got uh, some bit of interruption. But that's what happened. So we are going to hear from um, group group physical risks. Who was a who was a team leader? Anyone from physical risk? There was Andrew. Yeah, I don't know if Mr. Chola is already in here. He's in. Yes, Chola is in. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. First of all, uh, oh, okay. Okay. So, physical, physical security risk. Um, this can be events or actions or incidences that can cause uh, damage or loss uh, to the physical equipment. So uh, examples would be, um, just a minute. So examples would be, hello? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay, so examples would be tailgating, uh, theft, uh, social engineering, or uh, stolen identification. So what I mean by tailgating, uh, let me just define what it is. So tailgating can be... Uh, an incident or an action by an unauthorized personnel uh, to access uh, the equipment, it may be in a server room or anywhere else, and then make changes. Yeah. Then um, 
you can also have uh, documents theft uh, documents doesn't necessarily mean paper or written things it can be theft of equipment of hard drives or anything that can uh, damage or yeah that can damage the the hello yes we can hear you oh okay yeah so anything that can damage the infrastructure or existence of information or okay all right uh thank you uh group one for sharing uh group two i uh, before you go mr chola do you can you tell me uh, about uh, two participants from your group about the participants yes two participants hello hello yes so shall i can, can I... hear you two participants uh, you want me to mention the names of two yes. participants you meet yes 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 Okay, just a minute. There was a Piri and uh, Mumba, I think. Yeah. And Mumba. Okay. All right. Uh, group two, network risks. Hello. Yes, please. Nella. Um, um, Constantia, I'll talk on network risks. He, we said that for us to to for 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 someone to 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 experience a network risk since we said a risk is a potential threat or loss so we are saying here on network risk we are, we are experiencing a potential loss in network or intruders coming to our network and how can this happen we say this can happen through misconfiguration of the router. If our router is misconfigured, hackers can have access to our network, right? And then we also talked about eavesdropping, where we say someone can have an authorized connection. You know, you know, hackers can do anything. So they can have an authorized connection to our network. And when that happens, it then becomes a risk to our network. Then we also talked about hackers. We also talked about computer viruses. If our computers are, are, are affected by viruses, then it means our network will be at risk. Then we also talked about no password or password mismanagement. Here we say if your password is poor, or if someone mismanages his or her password, like write your password on paper and probably put it somewhere, someone can just get access to that password and then get access to our network, which is a very big risk to the network. We also talked about software vulnerability. What type of softwares do we use? If we use those net those softwares which are vulnerable, then it will be a very risk to our network. And then we also talked about network failure or poor network connection. Um, here we said when the network is poor or when the network is slow, it can be a threat to our network and hackers or hackers, yes, hackers can get access to the network, which is a very big risk to the network. Uh, we also talked about distributed denial service. We also talked about control threats where we are failing ourselves to control the network. It, will be, it can be a threat, it can be a risk since we can lose the network and that. I think that's all that we discussed on network risk. Any questions? Okay, thank Hello? you. Uh, thank hello? Thank you. Oh. Yes. Hello? 
Yes, I'm listening. Yes, I'm just on joining and I heard about groups. Can I know more about the groups you are talking about? Um, we shall talk about that later. But what happened is that I have a question we, for her. we were separated into different groups and different groups were tasked to discuss on the different categories or risks involved in information security. And now they're giving us what they have discovered or what they have discussed in their groups. Um, uh, yes, someone had a question for you, Constance. Okay, I'm waiting. Okay, thank you. Yes, I have a question. Yes, Constance. Okay, go ahead. Uh, how can you briefly explain on the router uh, aspects of the router? Please. Where I say the misconfiguration of the router. Like missing how? Okay, can anyone from the network risk explain for me? Can anyone help me from my group? I think I can come in. Uh, come in. Yes. Constance, uh, can I ask you uh, on the question where the colleague has asked about uh, the configuration? Maybe before you go in, let the colleague first help her uh, talk about the misconfigurations of the network devices. And then you can come okay. in and ask. So can I can I come in? Let uh, Chisanga first make a submission, then you can come in eh, and help her. Yes, yeah, so uh, misconfigurations can either be missing, um, especially if you have say a newly purchased router, it doesn't come configured with the proper access list to filter out network that is coming through to your network. So to, to filter out traffic that's coming through to your network. So that causes vulnerabilities on who is accessing your, your network. If you don't have a firewall in place, you don't have access lists, you don't have certain certificates sitting on your router, all those pose risks to your network. And for us, we categorize them under network risks. Thank you. Are you answered? Yeah, but she was talking of router. That's why I didn't understand. So I needed some. Okay, then uh, that's an addition to the same. Uh, that's an addition to the same. On the misconfiguration, an addition could be where you access, I mean, where you configure on it instead of uh, SSH on the router. And it is not as secure as the SSH. So that's also an example of misconfiguration. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Constance, for sharing. Uh, do you remember at least a name or two for uh, some participants from your group? Mm, I remember Chola Msonda. Okay. Yes. But Chola was from a different group, wasn't it? I don't remember now. Wasn't Chola the one? No, who Chola, was, Chola was in another group. Yes, was in Chola physical. was another group. Yes, was in physical. Uh, so uh, I did not. Okay. I, I think on that we didn't introduce ourselves. Eh? Yeah. Yes, but at least your name next are time. Mm. Your next names are time there. we need to introduce ourselves. Yes, even when you have little time, at least you take off a minute or two to at least try and understand who you're talking to, try to get a few names, at least good enough the names are written. Eh? You can at least read and know who is discussing what. It's always good to, right. to get Apologies. to know about and to build your networks. Eh? Our okay. apologies, say. It's okay, it's okay. Sure. Just a right. word of thought. Eh? Um, group three, system risks. Was it uh, system risks? We saw information risks. You saw information risk. Yeah, that was the group. Let us first did. This was first to do with the uh, information risk. Sorry, with no, system was... risk. Oh, okay, okay. There was also uh, a group with system risk. System risks. Yes, we had Benson as our group leader. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, for system risks, uh, we we agreed that. Uh, 
this is a where um where you can have a potential loss uh -huh. or threat against a proper functioning of a system and among those we looked at for example like uh, like a database like a database you can have uh, if you you can be affected a system a system can be affected by a virus attack and it malfunctions or even unauthorized access if for example there's a, an abuse of of privileges someone can have privileges but he or she goes ahead and uh, 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 abuses them and the system malfunctions. So basically, this is what we discussed with the uh, system risks. Okay. Any other you. member can add on? Uh, just to add on, I think uh, a system risk uh, should be, uh, it's, it's, a very, it's a very severe uh, risk because it can bring down other other, other things like uh, the applications and even the network, the failure of the system can uh, yeah, cause other, other, other uh, an, uh, uh, it can disrupt our uh, uh, services, of course. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, group four, information risks. Can I also add uh, some, some? Okay, you can add, you can add. Well, um, also on the on the information system, if uh, the are not frequently updated to, to perform their functionalities, it can also become a risk. Okay. We didn't get we didn't get anything. Maybe you can repeat a bit. You can repeat. Hello? Hello? Yes, please, you can repeat. Hello? Yes, yes, please, you can repeat. Okay, uh, for the interest of time. Hello, are you getting me? Yeah, we can get you now. Are not, uh, yes, if the system patches are not frequently updated. I was saying. I think your network is uh, defeating us, but Sorry, uh, I think my network is up. Yeah, yes, okay. It's okay. Uh, you can go ahead. I think my network is born. Okay. Thank you, Paul. But what you are trying to say is that uh, if the system patches, the, 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 the patches, if they're not constantly updated, uh, hackers or people out there can exploit the weaknesses of the vulnerabilities in those patches, old patches, and then they can that can be a risk to your systems. So information security, blow it away. Mr. Eric. Okay. Yes, um, we discussed information security, uh, information risks. Um, and uh, well, what we did look at is the fact that information risk is, is, is basically um, the likelihood that an authorized user will negatively impact uh, the confidentiality, the integrity, and availability of data that you collect, transmit, or store. So we looked at the stages. Uh, first of all, the the issues around the storage itself of the information. So the storage security aspects, uh, which will, would uh, entail where your, your server disks, your server storage, and uh, the encryption as regards to how you've stored that information. And then there's the aspect of when you are transmitting that information as well, there's the, the transmission security from uh, your, your Soho uh, branches, um, small office, home office, or from your uh, branch office to head office uh, with the booming of cloud uh, solutions and hosted and on-prem uh, uh, setups. You need to uh, encrypt or put security um, solutions so that it is not hacked uh, as it's being transmitted. 
but of course as well there's also the accessing itself the access security you have your users and what are they what mitigating factors have you put in place in terms of uh, uh, how they access it you've got your token um, access you've got your you've got issues around passwords and user credentials and permissions for them to access that uh, uh, that information so um yeah in, in, in a nutshell, nutshell we, we we looked at issues around that you know to establish and enforce appropriate authorization controls so that only users who need access have access and also to create controls that prevent changing that information without uh, the data owner permission itself so your information is 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 is, is has got that integrity it is not being modified and also of course the availability aspect of it you know to you establish a systems around uh, the either the network or the software uh, from being out of service so that that information is actually available someone who's logging in from uh, another town is able to, you know, to to log in because you've established a, a, a credible networks and, and software and they're able to log in and use that information that you've actually stored on your, either your head office or somewhere in the cloud. Um, I don't know if my colleagues have got others that, uh, issues that I might have missed out to add. Are those risks? Someone is saying something? Yeah, I, I was saying... Uh... Uh, were those risks, or they were just explaining the general, the general information on uh, information risks? Um, yes, there were there were risks. Hello, I can add on something. In in uh, in the in the next show, the, we're talking generally. We're trying to define uh, uh, the understanding of what information risks are. We can be able to get into detail in terms of what uh, uh, an example of a risk, this is what I did say as well. An example of a risk is uh, uh, in terms of availability, isn't it the, 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 the pinnacle of, 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 of securing, of, of understanding the risks? Is security, sorry, is the confidentiality, uh, integrity, and availability, and the other two. But let's say on the availability, if someone is, is trying to access your information, he's actually a credible user, he's got the login passwords and everything, and he's trying to access your information, which is on the other server, uh, on your, on your head, of, head office. If he's failing to do that, then it creates, uh, you, then your information has suffered a risk because he's failed to, to, to use it. So that's a kind of an example of, of what the information, what would entail to be an information risk. A risk is not a process of suffering. A risk is... I want to add on something. I want to well, add on something. I'm a no, member no, of the basically group. Basically what we, yes, um, as part of a member of a group, basically what we discussed was that information security basically lies under, uh, uh, can be categorized in three parts. And the first part is access security. Then we talked about the second one, which is the transmission. Uh, security and the hello hello yeah go ahead go ahead yes uh and uh finally uh access security so from those then i uh, think can still go deeper and explain more about uh, information security it's so vast that you, you might spend the whole the whole lecture on explaining on information security, really? but basically let the best they are fundamentally a, under three. Okay. Let me just coming on a very few points here, just to clarify on what my colleague has said. Uh, what causes uh, an information risk? For example, we have uh, social engineering where someone uses a phishing email to actually make people to review confidential information. So where you have an actual social engineering, you have an information risk. Again. Mm -hmm. There's a, there a way that uh, some networks have uh, no uh, proper access controls where someone can easily access a particular network. Now, when you have a network that can be easily accessed by individuals who are not even part of the organization, again, information for that particular organization becomes uh, risky. So 
unauthorized mm. access to the network by individuals who are not part of an organization and also poses a, an information risk. Then we have uh, people who in this field uh, give out passwords to individuals anyhow. So if these people are part of the system and they are connected to the system and they are giving out their credentials to people who are maybe friends or relatives, that can also pose an information risk for that particular system. So just to add no. on these few points to what my colleague has said. We hear you it's clear now. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that discussion. Uh, uh, we now move to application risks. Application, anyone? Tinashe. Tinashe is our secretary. Tinashe, are you there? Has she gone offline? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, I'm Tinashe from Zimbabwe doing applications risk. And from our group, we had Ka Kawisiki, if I'm not mistaken. Kiswik. From Zam Kiswik, yes, from Zambia. We had uh, Anvile Tuma from Zimbabwe. Ntoko Zizidube from Zimbabwe as well. So I'm just going to run through what we discussed. So when it comes to applications, we have web applications, mobile applications and the likes. So these applications, they are faced with um, risks such as data leakage and exposure, especially on the web applications, for example, the ones that, um, uh, for example, our paying portals, like online paying portals. So if they are not properly secured, um, there is danger that uh, data can be stolen from the portals. And um, insecure information transfers, uh, sensitivity of data, sensitive data being being exposed. So this we get into the security of of the websites, the HTTP and the HTTPS. Uh, use of unlicensed software as, as well on our applications. So suppose our our software within the application is not is not licensed, and then we we are using it. There is so much risk from hackers that they can easily access our applications as well. Um, also, injection of inje injection flows or improper configuration of SSL certificates within our applications as well. They can pose a risk to our application. Um, and validated redirects uh, or forwards for within the application, which then directs you to malicious sites. I'm sure we we have seen these a lot when you open a web page and then something pops up and then it directs you elsewhere. And then we also have um, input validation and sanitization uh, of of data within the within the application. Uh, the the applications on themselves, the applications also they can carry malicious code that can then harm uh further further devices. For example, if you're using a phone and then you 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 are using this application on your phone, it then it then uh then harms your phone, or if you're using it on your laptop then harm your laptop leaving some viruses and malicious software as well. Um, I don't know if members from my group I don't know if members from my group can add to the to the presentation. Members from uh, the application risks group, do you want to add to her presentation? Yeah, she has represented us well. She has represented uh, yeah. you well. Come yeah. again. Yeah, okay. uh, that is worth noting. I think she's done a very good representation of the group. Uh, oh, just okay. a quick add on, not to dilute anything. Uh, I'll just list them and end there. Uh, I think mm. uh, uh, notable ones is a secure injection, broken authentication on applications, 
sensitive mm-hmm. data exposure, you know, our data gets exposed so quickly, especially on social media, using these applications that we use like Instagram and so forth. That's mm-hmm. a, uh, you know, an application danger as well. Uh, uh, external, external entities with broken access controls on applications. We have security mm-hmm. misconfigurations on certain applications and cross-site scripting, mm-hmm. of course, and secure disrealization as well. Uh, the list can go on and on, but I think uh, she, has, she has done a, a tremendous job outlining each one of them. Mm. All right, thank you. Uh, team management. Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is, uh, let me wait for the, for the line to get clear. Uh, Okay, let me see who is this that is making a noise. Okay, yes. Uh, yes, so my name is Nathan Kwezi, um, representing the group that was tackling the issue of, of uh, uh, using management to help prevent uh, risks in the information security space. So I just wanted to start by defining exactly what what role management is uh, is used in in uh, information security in in the context of inf- information security. So uh, management, for example, provides policies or procedures within, let's say, an organization or a business, or even within a government, to educate their employees or participants to prevent uh, to prevent leakage of like sensitive data or anything to do uh, with, their, with their intellectual property or yeah, things of that sort. So uh, yeah, good management is needed in order to prevent even the small employees. You can have like a very secure project that you're working on as a company or a government and literally one picture could compromise the whole, the whole, uh, the whole operation that you're trying to do. Let's say it's supposed to be secret or it's not supposed to be revealed management is very essential in that in that space so um so basic uh risks that could that could happen let's say due to poor management of a company uh one risk could be how employees for example that that picture you showed of the chinese man who was in that oil company uh definitely the 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 management could have put in stricter policies in order to prevent these employees from taking pictures near the oil well or how they would send them or how they could possibly have limited their network uh, uh, uh the access to the network so so that, uh because of that lack of uh of proper clear concise management on how on procedures on how to uh, or, or on how to be aware of of the t- pictures they take that man took the picture maybe sent it to his wife and hackers from one of the bidding companies managed to secure that picture and use it to help, you know, uh, uh, make their their bid a bit more enticing. So that's just one example. Uh, especially when you're in business, when you're in a business or a company, you you have to put in procedures in order to prevent yourself from being uh, whaled or spearfished, because uh, there are many hackers out there who could just come and uh, they could pre- they can act they could do research on a certain employee, maybe your boss, and they could create a fake account that that mimics the that employee, and they could possibly send you an email, uh, sending you to telling you to send money to a certain account, and it's needed urgently. So something like that could be an example of how uh, a company needs to to you know to set up policies in order to to make sure each employee knows to make to look at the who is sending a certain thing or yeah something like that. So that that's a that's those are just a few examples. Uh, another example could be partitioning of uh, the local area network within an organization. Let's say uh, a good management team. Let's say if you're if you're a networking team, you you would put in a policy to separate the different uh, offices within a network uh, within a local area network. You'd separate the the individual uh, networks to prevent. Let's say. Uh, there was a ransomware outbreak in one office. It wouldn't take out the whole organization. You'd, it would only be affected in that one specific 
uh, sort of uh, uh, office. So that, that's also another technique that could be used in order using management to prevent uh, leakage of data or anything to do with the, the security of a company's information in the cyberspace. So in case anyone has anything to add on in the group, you can add on. Uh, yes, that's our, that was what we talked about. Thank you. Yeah, my, mine is just a slight question. Yes. When you're looking at management, do you look at managing the assets or managing of the threats? Uh, it's more of management of the employees because, uh, or even the assets itself. But because uh, uh, the example of the land was uh, creating a partition local area networks within a business. That's, that's an example of managing your assets and making sure that the actual hardware is, uh, is not able to communicate and spread viruses between them. But then the other aspect is, is managing or management of human resources, the employees, anyone who has access to the internet or has like a secure position within a company, they need to be briefed on how exactly to, to, to protect their data, the company data, uh, to make sure that they know that uh, there, there are people out there who will fish, who, who will send you phishing emails and, you, you be, be, if you're using a secure company uh, computer, you should not click those certain emails that look enticing, like, you know, so in order to prevent like viruses from being, from, from you know, being infiltrated into the company's IT network. So those are the, the ways in which you can manage. Uh, uh, maybe, yes. Maybe to add in a little, a little bit. Um, yes. When we're talking of management risks, we're looking at managing risks that may affect information resources. So these 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 risks could be fire, water, calamity, and all these things. That's why now you have to come up with uh, ways and means of either preventing them or recovering when such a calamity has hit. Those are basically those are according to my to what I understand. Those are those these are these are what what we call management risk. How do we yeah. manage? information, the information resources that we have. We're looking at hardware, software, as well as the data that is that is transported from one end to the other. Yes, that's 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 very true. Because at the end of the day, we have to remember that uh, computer, these networks require hardware in order to function. In order to have data, you need to have hard drives, you need to have a server, and also the physical aspect of, of, uh, of protecting those assets is also necessary when you're managing the, the, the risk, huh? uh, you have to make sure that those assets are also pre, uh, in a, they're put in a position where, let's say if data gets deleted or something, you have backups. So having a good management policy within a company can also pertain to the physical aspect of, of their assets within the company. So, or an okay. Yeah. All right, guys, guys. In addition. You. Okay, you add one, 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 one more last line and we proceed. Yes, um, this is Francis from uh, Group 6. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, in conclusion, uh, management risks are risks that arise from a lapse in terms of uh, you know, controls or weaknesses in terms of controls that management have put in place to manage you know, uh, these risks. So that's, that's it. So it could be inadequate policies, it could be inadequate procedures or, you know, lack of policies and procedures in an organization in terms of where risk management is concerned. All thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you all for participating and thank you all for sharing. We have existed and uh, took a little time for that session. So allow us to proceed. Uh, and uh, go to the next slide. So we are just going to peruse through these things. We have already talked about them. Physical risks, we already know that you're looking at the risks, the, the risk that can uh, harm your physical assets, yeah, physically. And we look at uh, like things like either someone destroying your, you know, your devices or stealing them. Uh, link aging, like uh, your, you know, network cable dies out. Hello. Yes, please. Um, are you going to share um this presentation, or are we, we going to have access to the recording? I actually shared it already, but I'll go ahead and share it again.
but I shared it. It's in the Telegram channel. Thank you so much. All right. Um, Mr. Made... Sen, I have a question. Yes, please. Are we going to move forward with these old questions? Yes, 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 please. Okay, for me, I was confused with the previous. Okay, asked and you stopped in the middle. But we shall proceed. I'll take the questions after. Eh? Let's proceed and finish this because it's almost coming to nine, and yet we have another slide to cover. Uh, PowerPoint slide to cover. So man-made damage and also bites from animals. Let's say a rat goes into your sub, your rack, your network rack and bites the cables, network device fault things, you know, your hardware devices failing, uh, network device unavailability due to power failure or electromagnetic radiation in the equipment room. Yes, yes, Tinashe. Can you please explain on link aging? Um, you know, when uh, put up a link, when you put up a link in your network, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear Hello? you. Hello? Yes, I can there's hear some, you. Some, some, yeah, yeah, you're loud and clear. Yeah, okay. There's some uh, loud, 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 loud noise in my background. I don't know. Either it's my microphone or it's, uh, let me try to see if people are muted here. Hello there. Hello. 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 Mr. Sandy, we have lost you. Yeah. Mr. Sandy. Oh, we've lost uh, Mr. Sandy. Looks like it. The co host, Abraham, maybe can help us. Hello. Hello. Let's wait for him. He's coming. Hello, hello. Yes. I think we can just wait for him. Uh, hello, Mr. Abram. Yeah, I think he has a problem with his network. Can we wait for him a little? Yeah. This one is linking, huh? Is it possible you can change me? This one. I think hello. it's open. Mr. Abram. Sorry. Yes, we need, we need, we need also. Okay, so you should start doing this. Mic check, mic check. Does it mean that delay Hello. people? Mic check, mic check, mic check. Uh, can I talk to the... Yes. Yeah, we're hearing you, Mr. Sandy. I think it's leaking. Let me can just... you hear me? We can hear you, Mr. Sandy. Okay, I think I had the issue you now. Microphone. Eh? I'm saying that we're really behind schedule. We need to finish the slide. Eh? And yes, since you have Mr. talked Sandy, about some of this... Can I say something? Thing? Yes, please. And it's um, it just like uh, it's a... In addition to what you're saying, there are very okay. many people that are asking questions, but mm. I think we can jot down something jot that is not making sense to us. Yes, to us. Yes. Then we Google instead of asking many questions and the lecture drags on because we might go till 10, True. yet we started on time. So True. In case someone doesn't I understand agree. something, they can jot it down, use Google. True. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know who muted you, but thank you for that submission. Or maybe even ask at the end of the lecture. So we also, you guys talked about uh, information risks. And uh, here you're looking, how is your information going to be stored? How is it going to be transmitted? Mr. Samuel. Uh, yes, please. Uh, sorry to cut you short. I have uh, sent a text at some point I'd lost internet and then I was not put in a group was uh, I'm back online. I'm just hearing that uh, management risk group and then someone talks about uh, their presentation. So what of me that who is not in a group, what do I do now? 
I think you just missed the session. Maybe you just wait. Yeah, I, I missed. I lost internet connection. I was on. I was traveling in short. Yes. Coming to Lusaka. I understand, Lusaka. but but there's nothing we can do because it has already passed on. The guy, the, the team members already discussed and presented their findings. Eh? So maybe oh, next yeah, time. Maybe. All right. Okay. But nothing to worry about. It, 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 oh, now. nothing to worry about concerning the exam. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, things that okay, are concerning the exam always concerned. make it very clear. It's not all right. at all. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. So, and also okay, how is the information going to be accessed? Now, uh, uh, look at information transmission. Uh, let's say you want to transmit it from the branch all the way to the headquarters. The attacker here can intercept uh, using the internet and they can you know tamper with your information and they can leak uh, information can leak to them so this is a risk as far as the information transmission is concerned and also uh, maybe someone also accessing and getting illegal access to our you know data center and getting um, our information and uh, we have our authorized user and there's this hacker here who is accessing our information without permission. Uh, with system risks, you talked about most of them, but uh, you're looking at uh, different configurations like your security database, the database system configuration systems, security of services running the system, the patches, and so on and so forth. You talked about all those things. When it comes to application risks, uh, this is why you look at the you know, the network virus risks, the operating system, security, email application risks, the web service, FTP service, the domain name service, and ETC and ETC. We all looked at those things. So when it comes to the network risks, usually your server room will be in a more secure zone. Uh, your devices that you want to, uh, you know, restrict access to will be in a more secure zone as compared to the office zone or the access layer of the different individuals who will be in a more, in a less secure zone. So management risks, this determines whether the information system has management risks from the following aspects. You can look at it at the national level where effective national information security regulations are formulated. Uh, some of the formulated uh, you know, regulations by NITA, which are being enforced. And of course, even specialized agency to manage information security still like NITA. You can also look at it at an enterprise level where security management rules and equipment room management system with clear responsibilities and right. We come up with a segregation of duties, know who is accessing what, when are they supposed to access what, how are new you know, users you know, onboarded onto your system, what processes must they follow and you know, the procedures that they must go through. Enterprises can establish on a uh, system security management organizations. Then also we have management systems. Here, effective security policies and high quality management personnel. Here with effective supervision and inspection system and adherence to rules and regulation. The significance of information system management. Uh, here they're saying that according to the statistics, about 70% of uh, information loss is caused by negligence all internal leakage by internal staff. About 70% of the information loss that is caused about in enterprises is brought about by either negligence or intentional leakage of internal staff. So security technologies are only the means to control information security. They can only be effective with appropriate support for management procedures. So we have already seen that about 70% of our data is being leaked by our internal staff. Remember, the end users are the closest people to our information, isn't it? The people who collect, the people who process, the people who transmit and send and request and all that, and the people who store the information. So they have direct access to our information, meaning that the people are the greatest threat to our, or the greatest risk to our information. I hope that is clear. So about 70% of, uh, after the survey, when it was conducted, about 70% of the information loss was caused by 
the internal staff. This is brought about uh, sometimes uh, there's a weak security awareness among employees. They do not know that it is unethical to share passwords or write down passwords on their stick notes and attach to their computers. Then there's, of course, there's malicious data theft when someone is intentionally stealing data from the organization and also having non-standard operations where you know they don't have clear boundaries who accesses what who has the rights to what system and then lose authentication or authorization rules let's say someone just needs uh maybe just use admin and the password of one two three four five and then they are able to access a system so technologies cause about technologies that includes the virus trojan host network devices what cause leads uh, about 30 percent of it leads to information loss while management and information stuff that is uh, this thing that we have looked about lead to you know information loss or harming our data to a tune of about 70 percent so the individuals are the closest people to our information therefore um, most of the biggest risk to our information is brought about by our internal staff. So the current development of information security management, they introduced information security development strategies and plan and each country has introduced its own information security strategy and plan. They're also trying to strengthen legislation to achieve a unified and standardized management. Uh, there, are, there are rules that you must adhere to. And also even in individual countries, they come up with rules like the cybersecurity laws that are being you know, implemented and passed every single day in our countries. So defining a standardizing information security work through law is the strongest guarantee for effective implementation of security measures. So entering the era of standardized and systemized management, with this era, the standardization and systemized information security management began in the early 1990s. And we're going to look at these documents like the, I, the ISO and the IEC. Uh, you know, frameworks and try to understand what they talk about. So the ISO uh, 2700 is the best known for our system and we shall look at it in detail. And then finally, uh, before we go to this quiz here, they're saying that uh, information security incidents frequently occur. Information security incidents frequently occur because security attack methods such as vulnerabilities, viruses, backdoors. So they're saying information security instances occur because of, frequently occur because of security attack methods such as viruses and backdoor programs. True or false? Before you answer, before you answer, I just want to find out from you. Uh, okay, let me uh, bring it up. Okay, so there's a poll on your screen. Kindly choose uh, what you think is the right answer in the next uh, three minutes. Security incidents frequently occur because of security attack methods such as you have about two minutes. I've so far seen 54 expenses out of uh, 176. So kindly take off time. There's a poll on your screen. If you don't see it, just look around. In your Zoom application, you'll be able to see it. Come. Yes, please. Uh, it is uh, inactive. You cannot choose the answer. You can choose the answer because I'm seeing people choosing the answer. Just press check with your settings. I don't know, but it's active. I've seen so far 118 people have answered already. 120 now. So just cross check 130. Just cross check with your with your. Okay, you have about a minute left. I think because I'm, I'm a co-host saying oh, oh, yes. 
Yeah. Hey, okay. You want me to downgrade you? I'll leave it now. I I will I will say it, uh, give my answer up. Okay. So I'm ending the poll in about one, two, three, four, five, up to ten, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Those who have not answered, I've marked you. I noted that uh, assignments are key in this course. So this is what uh, you guys have selected. Those are the answers that you have given. But what I want to take you back to this slide, right? About uh, 65, 67% of the people on this forum said the answer is true and about 34% said it was false. So, but before I want to just take you back to this page. Someone, please mute your microphone. If you know you have noise, Kevin. Okay, so I'm saying, are you all seeing my screen? Yes. yes. This slide was very clear enough saying technologies leads to about 30%, right? According to the surveys that were done. And then when it comes to management or when it comes to internal staff, it is caused by about 70%. So meaning frequently information loss is caused by, because 70% and 30%, which, which occurs more frequently? 70 percent so meaning frequently most of the time information loss or instances are caused by negligence all internal leakage by internal staff isn't it when we go back to this question here we are seeing that in information security standards um uh, so information <laughs> what am i reading information security incidents frequently occur because of security attack methods such as vulnerabilities viruses and backdoor programs. These are technologies and we already saw that they constitute about 30%. Yes, it is true. Vulnerabilities lead to instances. It is true viruses lead to instances. It's true backdoors, it lead to instances. But frequently, what leads to these security instances most? It is the negligence or intentional leakage of, uh, of, of, of internal staff or the management risks, isn't it? Because imagine if you do not allow the backdoor to install on your computer, if you do not download that, you know, funny email, do you think your computer will be at risk? No. It won't. It won't. If the IT personnel keep on updating the security patches of the antivirus and also they do not allow you employees, internal staff to put in viruses from unverified you know, places and they always scan their viruses. Do you think the viruses will attack your computers? No. Oh. Yeah. Isn't it? From, from okay. you so that means that our answer and I repeat when we're answering questions here, we need to be very key with some of those words that they put in the question. It is true, but frequently it is the internal staff or the management risks that lead to security incidences as opposed to these technology risks. I hope that is clear. Yeah, that is clear. Okay. I have one Yes, please. It was uncomfortable to term vulnerability, calling it a, as a security attack. You are what? You are calling a vulnerability so a method, security attack method. Uh, it's uh, it's not necessarily an attack method, but it is a risk, right? Yes. So yes. they are looking at it. It could be still a method, right? It could be an attack method because vulnerability is just a weakness, right? Yes. Is that a weakness? So we don't know in what either in the procedures, either in the system. Are, are you getting me? All, even 
in our way of storing our, you know, our assets, or even in our arrangement of those assets, or even in our, you know, segregation of duties. Eh? The Cindy, can I say something? Yes, please. Yes. So for us, the few that are in the thirty-four percent, is that what we are getting reward for paying attention? But but the thirty-four percent. Thank you for getting it right. Uh, thank you for getting it right. I wanted to do another slide, but I cannot because I'm sorry, it's, uh, I thought you were very busy. Uh, so out of time. Yes, I thought maybe you might be interested. Okay. What's happening in our class? Yeah, try one. using the link. Okay. If the link wow. works, then there is there is. Please, I don't know if you guys have been part of online classes, but whenever you're having a conversation, eh, you meet your microphone. So um, uh, in summary, uh, information security development history, uh, we have looked at the development history and I looked at the basic uh, concepts of information security. And thank you for today's class. This has been, uh, this brings us to the end of our class for today. I'm going to share this uh, lecture slides and also um, request you to go through it, those who wish to. I'm going to put up some assignment for you to do either by end of tomorrow. Uh, please kindly, when you see those assignments, make sure that you do them uh, faithfully because they'll count towards uh, your qualification for the free exam voucher. So kindly do them faithfully, but also they hope you prepare yourself and get well acquainted to the program. Uh, having said that, about the attendance, I want to let you know that the attendance is uh, captured automatically in the system. And uh, I will be able to know who attended at what time. And every after meeting, I extract that list of attendance and I share it with our uh, admins for that particular class. So uh, like for example, this meeting, which has been taking place, um, let me stop recording and stop the live share. Okay.